Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, good morning. I would like to take the opportunity in the beginning to thank Professor Stöckner and Professor Knecht for organizing this wonderful meeting. Lots of interesting things. Henna cancer is a very interesting type of cancer. And it's, a, it's a field where many disciplines are involved. And I think it's very, very helpful to have such meeting to get all the disciplines to a desk and discuss where we're going in the future. So thank you very much for having me here. And I wish you all and us a very bright and good discussion. It's basically impossible to sub-summarize within 20 minutes the field of targeted therapy protocols that are currently going on in head and neck cancer. So I just picked one detail, which are dendritic cells. In our discussion, we should really come to the point that we discuss other protocols and other advances or approaches to this type of cancer. In detail, you see the dendritic cell as original key function cell in the innate or in the immune system. It sits somewhere in the cleft of the tissue and upon a stimulus, which usually should be... Well, I need help. Okay. Upon a stimulus, which in the nature would be a virus or bacteria, the cell would become activated, present the relevant antigens to induce a T-cell response, plus co-stimulatory molecules, plus other co-stimulators, and then produce cytokines and other molecules to organize a real um, definite induction of immune response with T-cells or NK-cells. You have to ask for the next slide with this, because he doesn't know the... Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I see. Okay. So this is the way nature has arranged this very clever system. So the DC is actually the mediator between the innate, the inborn immunity, and the acquired, um, learned immunity. This has been taken, this fa fact has been taken to account with many, many DC vaccination trials, not only in head and neck cancer, but uh, predominantly in melanoma studies, where DCs were artificially generated out of the PBMC pool, the monocytes. Um, the adherent fraction was expended with cytokines in order to generate DCs. Such DCs were then loaded with different antigens, could either be from tumor fragments, could be that specialized uh, peptides, uh, by example, P53 or HPV E67, were loaded or pulsed onto the DCs, but also DCs were transfected with RNA, or they were fused with a tumor cell to become a hybridoma. There are plenty of protocols different in generating DCs, in loading DCs, which then would, under a certain type of cytokine cocktail, be matured and then given to patients either intravenously, subcutaneously, intracutaneously, intranodally, but there are plenty of protocols still ongoing in order to do in vivo what's supposed to do be in real life, activate T cells or activate NK cells, which again, by their cytokines, would support the T cell. This setting is just a very, very frank overview. There are thousands of details which I can't uh, mention here. But nonetheless, people come to the knowledge or see that these trials are actually not leading to where they should be, where they should go. It's, it's a not persistent T cell response. And T cells can either not be effectively stimulated or stimulation is suppressed immediately by the tumor or um, it's a not continuous, uh, continuous stimulation. The other thing is that the tumor itself, uh, especially melanoma, is a very quick learning tumor. So antigens presented by disease and T cell answers mounted to these antigens um, would be immediately taken down and the antigenetic shift renders the whole therapy to a complete uh, nonsense. So there's a clear escape mechanism by the tumor that would hinder the successful trial. The other thing that people have come across is that the DCs generated the way I described it by whatever protocol are artificial. A cytokine mixture that drives monocytes to develop into DCs 
um, is not what the DC biologically would present, and it changes the, the character of the cell, the way that an effective T cell stimulation is less likely. And last year, and the whole setting of new drugs, no new drug development and DC biology, people came across that DC activation, no matter whether it's an artificial DC, but DC activation itself is not very well done with inflammatory mediators like the cytokines I've mentioned before, because they promote a CD4 T cell helper response uh, in a very insufficient, insufficient way. So we do have basically the wrong cell, the wrong stimulation, and we don't have the sufficient immune response we would like to see in these studies. So what we need is actually, we need natural cells, not driven ones by cytokine cocktails, but we need natural cells, so we need new isolation techniques to directly isolate DCs that would then be functionable, way more than those that have been artificially generated. We need new drugs. Oop. Next, please. We need... Um, uh, new, new drugs, and we need... Um, no, I'm hanging here. Okay, so we need new drugs, that's what I want to say, and this is what I like to draw your major attention to, because this is something that's going to evolve over the next years. Um, we need the natural molecular activation of disease, and that's done by so-called PUMPs, pathogen-associated molecular patterns, which cover the whole name for immune stimulatory RNA, single-stranded RNA, double-stranded RNA, or DNA fragments. These are the stimulators that would be present in nature, and that would be those that would, well, initiate a real sufficient T-cell response. So, two years back, we've taken up these ideas and came to isolate the new dendritic cells, natural cells, without generating them from peripheral blood by cytokine cocktails, but by isolating them via a microbead assay. And from the peripheral blood, you can take the... you can isolate two cells, distinct dendritic cell cells, characterized by their special markers, one of which is the plasmacyte dendritic cells, one of which is the myelid dendritic cell, and we came across that they have completely different functions. The PDC is actually sitting in the tissue, and it's nothing but giving alarm. The PDC, upon right stimulation, is only there for secreting interferon alpha, by which the whole cascade of immune response can be elided, and it's not really involved into, in antigen presentation. MDC is the real dendritic cell that picks up the antigen in the periphery, migrates to the local re regional lymph node, and presents the antigen. This dendritic cell is actually the closest to those that have been generated artificially. Another thing that is absolutely needed for the understanding of dendritic cell biology is there's a whole new receptor cluster family, the toll-like receptors, by which the pumps are giving the signal. And there are 10 different toll-like receptors, each of which has its own function, its own signal transduction cascade beyond. And I want to draw your attention. Some of them are on the cell surface, some are located in the endosome, but this is not a strict dogma, because they can be variably regulated into the surf, uh, from the surface to the inner cell, and so on. There are many data under this. But I want to draw your attention to the necessity of pumps. Pumps are actually covering, or the right, or the right ligand, for four of the receptors, and they cover both DC types and also all other cells of the innate immunity. From all those pumps, RNA fragments, DNA fragments, I want to draw your attention in this talk to the DNA CPG oligonucleotides. CPG is called CPG due to its ZG frag, um, frequency, and DNA that contains these CG sequences is CPG DNA. 
The difference and why it's so special is CPG in bacterial DNA is in the frequency to 1 to 16. In humans, it's 1 to 6T. So if a human DC sees a bacterial DNA fragment, it's a clear danger signal, and then a whole cascade goes on. I can only focus, as I said, on DCs. I'm not going to talk about B cells, and I'm not going to talk about NK cells, which are touched and struck the same way by CPGs or RNA. So if a PDC sees the dendritic cell that has to call the immune system in, on place, a CPG molecule, it'll immediately produce interferon alpha in a very high level. This interferon alpha will directly stimulate the other type of myelid dendritic cell, but also the myelid dendritic cell itself can see CPG and work with cytokines. What happens next is that this interferon alpha will call on all the gamma delta T cell and K cell, and in another step, it'll, the cytokines that will be produced about, upon CPG on PDCs, IL-8, IL-12, TNF-alpha, will immediately call T cells also CD4 as well as CD8. So you see CPG is a very potent driver of the whole immune system. Now we come to the point that the tumor has seen this mechanism and that the tumor can absolutely um, use CPG for its own growth. I'm not going to go into this, but that's under current investigation. And uh, the tumor will absolutely limit both types of dendritic cells or use those cells for its own expansion. So, I've given you the baseline why current DC trials are not that well functioning. And now we go into um, how the immune system is con um, configured and how we can um, work on that. So we have two types, we have the innate, the inborn immunity, and the acquired immunity. And you see that the dendritic cells are right in between. And now we come to the point where the head and neck cancer comes, and it really kills the whole situation. Let's start with the MDC stories, MDCs first. As I mentioned, the MDC's job is actually to pick up the antigen at periphery, migrate to the local regional lymph node, and present the antigen toward um, all the cells sitting there. Next, please. And um, start an insufficient immune response. So, we have three mechanisms that are prone to tumor um, influence. And what we've examined is actually the migration of these cells under the influence of head and neck cancer and CPG. So, what we see is, funny enough, if you have dendritic cells in an upper well of a certain transwell assay, and down there um, you have the media, you see that MDCs migrate quite frequently. If you have MDCs migrate towards HNSCC, you see that HNSCC accelerate, funny enough, they accelerate the migration. That is strange, because the tumor should not be interested that his message comes to the local regional lymph node, so something must be wrong with those cells that are sent off by the tumor. If we use CPG, next please. Well, I can tell you that CPG will slow the migration. So head and neck cancer gets those cells to migrate. CPG DNA would limit the migration. So in further characterization, what these cells have, that they migrate quicker or slower, we examined the cytokine productions of MDCs that have been incubated in head and neck cancer supernatants. And what we come across, this is the, the cytokine levels of IL-1, IL-6, and IL-10 of naturally cultured MDCs. As long as they've been incubated in supernatant of head and neck cancer, you see that high levels of interleukin-1, the cytokine that HNSCC need to expand their own growth, high levels are induced. So basically, the tumor turns the MDC to a cow, which you can easily suck out. So interleukin-1 is induced in MDCs under tumor. IL-6, the pro-inflammatory cytokine that would cause an immune response, is completely lowered to zero to very low levels. And IL-10, the inhibitor of a sufficient T-cell response, is maximum upregulated. So 
next part here. No. Mm -hmm. Okay.